These are the new HD Zero FPV goggles. They are one of the most anticipated products to release in FPV in the last 12 months, not only because they have HD Zero built in, but because they are one of the most feature rich goggles available on the market today. There are a lot of people who are interested in getting these goggles, not only for HD Zero, but also to be able to use with other systems as well. Today, I'm going to be walking you through what you get in the box, walking you through the features and capabilities, and then at the very end, sharing with you my thoughts, having spent some time with them. This is going to be a long video because there is a massive amount to cover here. However, hopefully by the end, you will have a good idea of if these goggles are for you. Now, just before we get into it, I do just want to be clear up front that I was given early access to these goggles. However, I did not receive them for free. I have bought and paid for them. As always, my thoughts and opinions are entirely my own and other people's thoughts and opinions may vary. All I can do, as always, is share with you my own personal experiences. Some people will agree with them, some people won't. I also just want to say a massive thank you up front to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to buy these goggles or some of the other products that I talk about on this channel without their support. Support. and if you'd like to support us to keep making content like this, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's see what you get in the box. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a bit of an unboxing and just show you what you actually get with the HD Zero goggles. Now, looking around the box, I do want to say I really love this spot gloss image of the new goggles on the front. I'm a bit of a sucker for spot gloss, if I'm honest, and it's really great to see that image of the HD Zero goggles there. You're seeing exactly what you expect to find inside. If we flip the box over on the back, you'll find QR codes for the HD Zero social media pages. And there's also a dedicated QR code that will take you straight to the manual for the HD Zero goggles too. Above this, you also have some regulatory information. So it tells us about the FCC compliance and all of that's there, nice and easy to find. Then if we go to the top, this probably isn't going to be in focus very well, but what we have is what's included in the box. So we have one set of goggles, two face plates, one sponge padding, one thick canvas bag, power cable, VTX programming cable, headband and stickers. And then along here, it gives us some of the base specification of the HD Zero goggles, the model number, the resolution that they're capable of, as well as the input voltage range. Now, if we take a look at inside, when we lift the lid, the first thing you will find is this big card with a HD Zero logo on the front. And whilst there doesn't look to be a lot this side, if we flip this over, what this is, is a really nice quick start guide. It shows us the goggles themselves and it gives you an indication of where everything is and what it does. It gives us a quick view of the menus and give us all the other additional information down here, just giving you a quick overview of how the goggles actually function and how to get around the menus. Really nice to see as a first thing when you get into the box. Then when we lift the packaging, we get rid of this foam and this reveals the HD Zero goggles themselves. And then we have a box here with the accessories in. Now we'll take a closer look at the goggles in a minute, but you can just withdraw these from the box. There we go. You can see them there. We've got the antenna ports, but again, we'll look at that more in a moment. Below this is just some foam packaging, nothing there. And then at the back, we've got our accessories box. So if I just put my hand in and get this out, move the main box out of the way a moment. And then if we open this up, we should reveal what's included inside. We have here a little bag with some HD Zero stickers, a lens cleaning cloth, and the prop there's something else in there. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Give this a bit of a shake. This then reveals everything else inside. So we have our HD Zero head strap, which they include with the goggles. This looks absolutely fantastic, really thick, big HD Zero logo, massive plastic buckles. Wow, they are solid. That's great. And then we've got these latches that go around the side and there's some really nice large buckles on the side of the goggles for them too. I really do like the strap. It's nice to see a manufacturer including a good strap with their goggles as standard. We then inside have an additional face mask. There are two face masks included, one already on the goggles and this one, and they are different profiles. So you can choose the face mask, which best suits your face. We've got our power cable, very similar to what we've used on HD Zero before, XT60 input and then barrel connector. We've then got our foam. So depending on which mask you choose to use, you would then stick that foam onto the mask with the Velcro. And then we have the included HD Zero carry bag for the goggles, which is really softly lined on the inside. It's like a felt 
That's really very, very nice. And actually, I think it's fantastic that they're including a bag like this. Some manufacturers include a case, but I, I really like this bag, I have to say. So that's what we get in with the goggles kit. Next, what we'll do is take a closer look at the goggles themselves. Now, before I walk you around the specs and everything of the goggles, I just want to say how fantastic it is to finally hold these in my hands. We have been talking about and hearing about the HD Zero goggles for what feels like forever. However, today they are finally here. Now, there is a lot to go over with these because, frankly, these are the most feature-rich set of FPV goggles available on the market today, and I'm going to explain in a minute why that is the case. Now, Obviously, these are made by HD Zero and designed to be used with HD Zero, and they have a HD Zero receiver built in. With that, you can see that there are two SMAs on the front and two SMAs on the top, and that is the antenna inputs for that digital system. There are no patch antennas built into these goggles at all. HD Zero have allowed you to make the choice of what antenna setup you want to use. They do not include antennas in the box with it as well, and it's going to be down to you to decide what you you want depending on what your situation is. I'm going to be using these with the new set from TrueRC that I'll be showing you later on in this video. Now, as I've said, we've got our HD0 receiver built in. However, that is not the only party trick of these goggles and we'll see a lot more around that as we take a look around the bottom. If we start at the top, what we have is our rotary encoder and push button in the center for controlling our menus. This has a really nice soft click to it, feels nice and solid and the button in the middle is really nice too. We have a recording button on the right hand side over here and obviously the two top SMAs for the antennas. In the middle there is this grill which is one of three fans that are located in the goggles. In fact there are three fully controllable addressable fans which you can control in the menus and again we'll take a look at that a little bit in a minute. You'll also notice that there's this groove carved in the top and there's one of them on the bottom as well and that is for a rail mount system that allows you to mount the antennas on the front rather than have them hanging off the SMA connections and you'll see a bit more about that when we look at the ones from True RC. If we then flip around to the sides, on this side here you have your power input jack as well as a power switch. That is a physical power switch where you slide it forward to turn the goggles on and slide it back to turn the goggles off and it's really nice to have a proper physical switch on there as well and then you can see that grill there for one of the fans and that grill on that side there for the other fan. On this side here is a bay for an analog module. It doesn't take an analog module directly into the goggles, but HD Zero make an adapter, and again, I will show you that later on in the video, that allows you to put a full analog module on these goggles, whether that be something like the TBS or the one from Immersion RC. If we then flick up to the front or the inside area, we have our optics of the goggles and our face mask around here. As I've said, they include two face masks with these goggles of standard, a wider and a narrow one, allowing you to choose the one that's best suited for your needs. In the middle, you can see the optics area that slide in and out with the IPD adjustment. And these goggles also have full focus control as well. And we'll look at the spec of that as we move through. On the side here, you then have two nice solid hoops for attaching the strap. Again, we'll fit that in a minute as we move through the video. And then if I rotate the goggles over underneath, you can see where all of the IO is located. Now, if we start on the left hand side, we have a 3.5mm head tracking port, a firmware update port for the HD0 VTXs, a combined headphones and microphones jack, HDMI output, which is a mini HDMI port, HDMI input over this side. Yes, these goggles have both HDMI out and HDMI in, an SD card for the built-in H.265 DVR, and an analog AV input over here. But again, as I've already said, you can also attach a module bay on the side, allowing you to put a full analog module in too. Now, taking a look at the specs, it's clear the new HD Zero goggle is probably the most feature-rich FPV goggle you can buy today. We have dual 1080p OLED displays with a maximum refresh rate of 90 hertz. They have a 46 degree field of view and support both focus and IPD adjustment. The IPD range is 57 to 70 mils, and the focus range is minus six to plus six, and you also have the option of installing diopters as well. 
We have HD0 built in as standard, and alongside the usual 720p 60 mode, there's going to be a new 1080p 30 mode, as well as a new 540 90p mode, which is going to offer the smoothest possible image. HD0 have obviously been able to tweak how their system works with the new displays on this goggle, and it's going to be really interesting to see how these new modes look in the future. And as a result of the integrated nature of these goggles, they've been able to reduce the latency even lower, as low as three milliseconds end to end. On top of all of the usual HD0 functionality, we have HDMI input for connecting external devices, including the HD0 module or other modules from other manufacturers. We have HDMI output, allowing you to use it with external displays. We have analog AV in, as well as an analog bay on the side, as I've shown already, for connecting a traditional FPV module. We also have built-in six-axis head tracker, a built-in ESP32 for backpack support and express LRS, a new H265 DVR, which supports audio recording from the built-in microphone, but also supports an external microphone as well. And there's going to be a new Wi-Fi module available in the future that's going to offer live streaming too. The goggles themselves support an input voltage range of 2 to 6S, or they're rated at 7 to 25.2 volts. And whilst you can use them up to 6S, it is advised that you are careful, and a safe range for the goggles would be 2 to 5S to ensure that you don't get any issues. Now, it's clear looking at the hardware, they really have been able to pack quite a lot into these goggles. However, there's also some interesting things on the software side of things. For instance, the new HD0 goggles are open source, and the main operating system is is an open source Linux OS that you can download and customize yourself. This means people are going to be able to develop their own functionality on the goggles, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this develops as time goes on. And what it means is it isn't going to be all down to HD0 to bring new features in the future. The community is going to be able to pick up where HD0 have left off and drive the development of the goggles forward as well. Now, before you get to use them, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you've got the faceplate that best suits your face profile. For me, this one is actually the best, and as a result of that, we're going to need to swap it over. Now, this faceplate simply removes from the goggles. You give it a bit of a push to release the clips that are located on each side. It is quite tight, and it does feel like you're probably going to break something. However, don't worry. Once it starts to unclip, it will release and then you can simply swap it over nice and easily for the one that best suits your face. Once the clips are released, you simply then give it a tug. There you go. You can see it's come off. That re reveals the inside of the goggles. And then we simply take the faceplate that we do want to fit, gently press that down in place, and then that will clip in slowly as we move it around, and then make sure all of the clips are in, and then once that's done, you're then able to make sure that it is tight, making sure that there's no gaps around here. So you can see there that there's a bit of a gap. There we go, we're on that side there, and we're on that side there. Next, once that's done, we simply then need to fit our foam padding. This has Velcro on the back again. So what we need to do is simply align it up roughly in the right place. And I'm then going to start over here stick it on, making sure that we get it on the Velcro all the way around. You don't want to stretch it, you just want to make sure that when it goes on, it fits on nicely. Making sure that you get the nose area correct. And then once you've got it fitted in the right place, you're then ready to fit the strap. Now fitting the strap is really straightforward. We simply pass the buckle through Clip it on on each side, so it's one there, pushing it through from the outside, clipping it on there, and then the strap is fitted, ready to go. Now, size and shape-wise, the new HD0 goggles are a traditional style goggle, which means they're not a box goggle. They do fall into the same category as the likes of the O4Xs, the new Dominator or Fat Shark goggles, and the new DJI goggles too. Whilst they are a little larger than some of the other goggles, they are certainly not the biggest available on the market today, and they're certainly not as large as what we've seen from DJI with the V1s and V2s. Weight-wise, the new HD0 goggles come in at 360 grams, as you see it here, with the head strap, 
but without the antennas. If you're going to use it with an analog module on the adapter, that weighs about 47 grams with the TBS Fusion. So that's going to come in for a total of about 407 grams with the goggles, the module and the strap. But obviously there's going to be a little bit more weight when you fit the antennas. If we compare the HD Zeros to the Sky Zones on size, first of all, you will see that the goggle is bigger. It sticks out much further at the front. If I just place it on the desk, it is a larger goggle overall. However, it does have that digital system built in. The Sky Zones come out at 288 grams, so they are about 72 grams lighter than the HD Zero goggle. However, if you were to add in the goggles module, the version 2 module that I've got here, that does bring the Sky Zone up to about 387 grams in total, making it just 20 grams lighter than the full HD Zero goggle. Next, if we compare to the Fat Shark or the Dominator goggle from Walksnail, you can see the size is much more comparable. These goggles do have a much larger front area, and again, when I place them side by side next to each other, you can see that they are similar overall. The Avatar goggle goggle is narrower than the HD Zero goggle, but it is worth taking into account that this goggle has no option for analog, no video inputs, and it is strictly a digital goggle for the Avatar HD system. Weight-wise, the Avatar goggle comes in at 312 grams, 48 grams lighter than the HD Zero goggle as standard, but again, these goggles don't remotely have the same features and capabilities as the new HD Zeros. Now, finally, the last goggle I'm just going to quickly compare against is the new DJI Goggle 2. Now, these are a very, very small and compact goggle. They are also super lightweight as well, coming in at 299 grams, 61 grams lighter than the HD Zeros. But again, a fixed goggle, no analog input, no HDMI in, no HDMI out, not remotely the same functionality. But I did just want to put them side by side just so you've got an idea of the sort of shape and size between these goggles. Now, one of the major benefits of the new HD Zero goggles is the compatibility with other systems. Instead of locking it down to just HD Zero, they've actually tried to make it as widely compatible as they could. We have the analog module bay, which allows you to use it with your traditional analog FPV. And we also have that HDMI input on the bottom that's going to allow you to use it with other systems, including the new VRX module from Walksnail. What we're going to do next, though, is take a look at the analog bay, show you how you fit that on and what that looks like. So to access the external connection, there is a small door on the side of the goggles, which you can flip up on the bottom here, and that reveals a connector inside with a screw hole as well. Now, as I understand it, HD Zero have two modules available. We have this one here, which is the standard analog bay module, which clips onto the side of the goggles. And there is also a Wi-Fi version available as well. Now, what this does is it allows us to connect our analog module to the HD Zero goggles. You can see inside here, there's a PCB, and then there's a connection on the back there that goes into the goggles, into the bay I just showed you. And then you have the pin area down here for the pins on your analog module. Now for this, I'm going to use a TBS module. So we're simply going to take it, place it into the bay, pushing the pins through that PCB connector on the side there. And then they, you can see, have gone into the back there. And then we're going to take the TBS cover, which does fit, clip that in. That then clips in to the clips on either side. And then that's the module in and connected. Now to mount the bay is straightforward. We simply then take it, place it onto the connector on the side, push it in place and it clips on. And then you can see that that analog module is fitted and ready to go. Now, as I did show, if I just remove it, there is actually a screw at the bottom here, down here, which allows you to permanently mount this bay on the side if you want to. It does clip in and out. It does secure on quite well. So when you clip it down, it does latch in place. It's not going to fall off very easily, but if you did want to permanently mount it, you can put the screw in under the analog module, and then that will mount the bay on the goggles permanently. Obviously, this is going to add a bit more size and weight to the goggles, but it does mean that you have an option for analog if you want to, but it then means that it's not there all of the time if you don't.
Now, whilst the HD Zero goggles do have wide compatibility, their primary goal is to be the best possible goggle for HD Zero. They achieve that through their ultra low latency, as low as three milliseconds, and they are fully compatible with all the existing cameras and VTXs in the HD Zero ecosystem. There has been quite a lot of changes in the HD Zero world over the last few years, and what I'm going to do next is just walk you through all the VTXs that are available that are compatible with these goggles. There will, though, be some feature differences on each of the models depending on what camera you choose. For instance, that new 540p90 mode is going to require a new camera, but the new 1080p30 mode will work with the number of the cameras that are available on the market today. What's nice with the new HD Zero goggles is that it does make it much simpler with regards to the camera configuration, and you don't have all of that messing around choosing the modes on the camera and choosing the modes on the VRX module like we had in the past. Starting at the small and lightweight end, we have the new HD Zero Whoop Light VTX kit. This kit consists of a 1S VTX that weighs just 4.5 grams, with a new nano light camera that weighs just 1.5 grams. It offers all of the usual functionality of HD Zero and comes in at about 7 grams in total for the complete digital kit, allowing you to install HD Zero on smaller and lighter aircraft than ever before. If you don't require that level of space saving though, you still have the original Whoop VTX that I've got here, like I have in the Emacs, coupled with this original nano camera, allowing you again to get HD Zero in a small lightweight portable package. Those two Whoop VTXs go alongside the other models that are and have been available. We have the original 500 milliwatt dual board version, we have the original Race version 1, or the new Race version 2, that's 200 milliwatts and is still available today. Then for those who want something with a little bit more power, we then have this, the Freestyle VTX. This is the up to one watt max VTX with that micro V2 camera up front, offering the best possible performance and best possible image quality that you can get in HD Zero today. One of the biggest selling points of HD Zero has always been the fact that it is a low fixed latency system. But there is more to it than that. It's not only a low fixed latency system, but it's also a one-way transmission system as well. There is no RF from the goggles, there is no transmission from the goggles to the VTX, and it acts very much like analog in the way the VTX transmits the signal to the goggles, that is picked up and received on the same channel allocation that analog uses, and it can also be used alongside analog without any problems, whether it be in a race environment or just general flying. As I've mentioned already, this system allows for a fixed latency as low as 3 milliseconds end to end, and that is a pixel to pixel latency from the camera to the goggles itself. However, we don't see in just single pixels, what we see is a full frame of data. What HD Zero are talking about with this 3 milliseconds pixel end to end is one pixel on the camera being resolved on that goggles display, taking 3 milliseconds. Just comparing that to analog, analog is around 2, so it is extremely close, but that isn't actually what we see through the goggles because there's an additional latency to be added as a result of the actual frame rate of the cameras. For instance, the the actual system frame rate of HD Zero when using it with the original 60 frames a second cameras is actually at about 19.7 milliseconds. That is vastly lower than any other digital FPV system on the market today, and as I've already mentioned several times, that is a fixed latency as well, and it is very comparable to analog depending on what your camera and goggle setup is. There are some analog setups as low as maybe 1617, but really HD Zero is very, very close. However, if you really want to take things a step further, they've developed the new Nano 90 camera that offers a 540p 90 frames a second mode, and with that mode, it offers a system latency of around 14.1 milliseconds. That again can be dramatically lower than any other digital FPV system on the market, but may even be lower than many analog systems on the market. There is no digital FPV system out there today that offers fixed latency, but also latency as low as HD Zero, and in some ways you will find HD Zero may even be lower than the analog setup that you're already using, and if you're someone that really wants the lowest possible latency system, HD Zero is the only option for you to consider with regards to 
to digital FPV. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the big interesting facts about the HD Zero goggles is the fact that they are running open source software. Rather than developing a closed ecosystem for the software side of things, HD Zero decided to open it up. And whilst they have done the primary development on the system, we're going to see this develop from a community point of view moving forward. What I'm going to do next is walk you through the menu systems on the HD Zero goggles as it looks today, just to give you an idea of what the base functionality is. But this is going to clearly change as we move forward. And it's really going to be interesting to see how fast and what interesting features people bring as time goes on. First of all, taking a look at the overlay that you get on top of your video image. In the top left, we have a small fan symbol with a number that tells us the current fan speed for the HD Zero goggles internal cooling. Next, we have a small padlock with a little green wavy line. What this is telling us is that the goggles are locked in and synchronized with our VTX. There is no two-way link between HD Zero goggles and the VTX, but what HD Zero have been able to do is get the lowest possible latency with the HD Zero goggles by making sure all parts of the system are synchronized and this padlock is telling you that it is. Over the other side, we have our little recording icon to tell us that we are recording to the DVR. We then have a video link quality readout, giving us a number to represent the quality of the HD Zero video link. And then next to that, we have our four signal bars for our receivers that are built into the goggles, giving us an indication of what we are getting on each input. Okay, now to walk you through the HD Zero menu system, here on the screen you can see the main menu screen. On the left, we have our control options. Along the top, we have various pieces of information such as the SD card status, the RF situation, the ESP situation, Wi-Fi, as well as battery voltage. We then obviously have the ability to scroll up and down, and we do this via the control wheel that's on the top of the goggles. Now, the top option is the Scan Now option, and this will automatically scan for the HD Zero signal on channels. So if I just press the button, you'll see it'll perform the normal channel scan just like it does on the HD Zero VRX module. If I scroll down to source, here we have the option of choosing the input we want on the HD Zero goggles. So we have HD Zero, we have our HDMI in, our AV in, our expansion module, or back. The nice thing about this is you can see when the inputs are connected and it's quick and easy to select them. Next, we have our image settings here. We have our settings for the OLED display. We have our brightness. We have our saturation, contrast, and OLED auto off timer. Next, we have our power options allowing us to select our battery type. So at the moment, it's currently set at 4S. We have the minimum voltage that we want it to warn us on and then have the warning type, which is beep, visual or both. And then we have a back button that returns to the main menu. Next, we have the fan control options. Now, as I've mentioned already, HD Zero does have three fans on board. You have auto fan control and you have the ability to control these manually. You can control the top fan and the side two fans together. And you can choose to do that simply by turning off the auto control on and off. And then if you want to control the speed you want simply by the control, setting it from on and off all the way up to setting five, which gives you the maximum cooling. Next, we have the recording options for the built-in DVR on the goggles. Record mode allows us to automatically or manually enable recording on the goggles. Auto will start recording the second it picks up a signal, and manual will obviously only record when you press the record button. We then have the option for the record format. Selecting MPEG-4 will allow you to use that usual file container. However, it's worth noting these goggles don't have a supercapacitor on board. And as a result, if you did power down whilst recording in MPEG-4, you would potentially corrupt the file. Setting to TS will mean if you do power down, the file will record and play back absolutely fine. It's worth noting on the record format that this is simply the container. The overall file format is H.265 and you can convert from MPEG-4 to TS or TS to MPEG-4 via a simple script if you want to anyway. Next, we have the option to record the OSD. This is the HD Zero OSD that is displayed on the screen as you're looking through the goggles. We have the record audio option because the HD Zero goggles do have a microphone built in. And then we have the option to select what we want that audio source to be. So i.e. the built-in mic or the line in or AV inputs. Finally, on this screen, we then have the format SD card option to allow us to format the card. 
Next, we have the auto scan options. This allows us to turn on or off the auto scan function and then have the ability to set what you want the goggles to do on power on for their input. For instance, do what it did last, HD0, expansion port, AV in or HDMI in. The connection screen is where the options are for the I.O. that's available on the goggles. We have our backpack option to turn on and off with the ESP32 that's built in. We have the Wi-Fi function if you're using the external module with Wi-Fi. And then you have the Wi-Fi configuration settings as well. It's worth mentioning that the Wi-Fi option is not built into the goggles as standard. It is a separate module that is available as part of the analog module bay if you want to go with that version. Next, we have the options for the built-in head tracker. We can turn this on and off, and then we can also use the calibrate option to allow us to calibrate the built-in gyro that's used for the head tracking functionality. The final two options in the menu are playback that allows us to select files to playback from the SD card. And then we have the firmware menu that allows you to check what the current version is on the goggles, update the VTX via the port on the bottom, or update the firmware on the goggles via the SD card. Now, with regards to antennas, as I mentioned earlier, HD0 don't include any with the kit. The HD0 goggles have four ports on them, just like the new version for VRX, and all four of those ports do need to be used. Now, there are varying antennas on the market, obviously, and there are some that have been made specifically for the HD0, like you can see here from TrueRC. What we're going to do next is just take a closer look at the situation with these, and then talk about a few other options as well. The first set of antennas we're going to look at for the goggles is these. I have a set of XA patches that have been specifically designed for the HD0 goggle from TrueRC. In the kit, you get two of the XA 5.8 patches, which have cables exactly the right length. And then you have two plastic brackets included as well. These stick to the back of the antenna and they're designed to mount onto the goggles rail system, which is here and here. So for instance, if I just take the bracket itself, clip it on and you can see that that will simply slide back and forth mount on the front and that just gives a nice compact installation. With them I also ordered a pair of their Singularity stubbies. These are going to mount onto the top two ports and that should give me one of the better overall performing packages for antennas on these goggles. To set these up, it's nice and simple. What you have is a 3D printed bracket with a cut out either side for the cable to go on. So what you would simply do is take your patch mount it on into the center of the bracket like that and then it can clip onto the goggle. So what we're going to do is remove the cover off the sticky pad to reveal the adhesive area on one side. We're then going to align that up to the back of the patch antenna, getting it just in the right place. Give it a press so the adhesive sticks and that's the antenna then mounted on that one. Now fitting these onto the goggle is nice and straightforward. You could simply slide them at either side onto the rail system on the front. So there's that side there, that side there. You can also give it a push and it'll clip on as well. And then we simply need to just gently bend the coax and do up the SMA connections on either side. They're not difficult to do. There's a bit of tension on the cables when they are brand new, but that'll loosen up a little bit over time. There we go. There's one. There's two, and then we have the singularities, which we're going to screw onto the top ports. And there we go, as you can see, all fitted. Now this setup gives a really nice compact package. You've got those XA patches on the front, they stick out just 15 mil off the front of the goggle, and then you've got those singularities on the top, but again, they don't stick out very much at all, and you're going to be able to put this away as it is here. You're not gonna have to mess around taking those antennas on and off. You've got some great performing antennas here as well, with those XA patches at the front offering up to 10 dB of gain with a beam width of 120 degrees, and then you've got the Singularity Omnis at the top, and this package overall is probably going to be one of the best performing antenna setups for the HD Zero goggles. Now, alongside the TrueRC antennas, there are obviously loads of other options available on the market. The nice thing about the TrueRC kit is that it is designed for the HD Zero goggle, but I have also tried other antennas, including the Pico patches from Menace RC that also fit the goggles really nicely when used with a 90 degree adapter, and you can choose to use them along with the Singularities or something like their Menace RC 
pagodas and again it makes a nice clean and small setup allowing you to leave them on the goggles all of the time. The real big thing to take from this as I've said already is what's most important is that you are using all four antenna ports and you're not choosing just to use one or two based on how many antennas you've got laying around. Now just to touch a bit more on the input voltage as well as what the power consumption is on these goggles. As I mentioned earlier, the HD0 goggles support a maximum input of 25.2 volts. That equates to a normal fully charged 6S battery, so they are rated up to 6S max. However, it is important that you do not use over 25.2 volts, you do not use a HV 6S battery or an overcharged one. I do though recommend probably sticking with 5S max if you can. If you are going to use 6S though, you should only do so if you plug it in with the power switch off. That way there's less risk of any voltage spikes or transients making it through into the goggles and then when you power it on with the switch it should be fine. Now as for power consumption the specification says 15 watts but what I'm going to do is just a couple of quick checks to see what it comes out at both on a 6S battery as well as a 4S. Looking at 6S, first of all, the goggles are powered on, they're actually recording on the DVR and receiving a HD0 signal, and this is about the most power they're going to draw. At the moment, we're getting a reading of about 560 milliamp, 600 milliamp, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of an amp. It's varying slightly depending on the fans, how strong they're actually running. But at 6S fully charged, you're looking at about 600 milliamps of power draw. Just looking on a 4S, we're getting about 0.95 of an amp, something like that. It's equating out to roughly 14, 15 watts of power draw for the goggles, depending obviously on what battery voltage you're using. Before we move into the latter part of the video where I share with you my thoughts and we'll talk about a few other things as well, including the pricing, it's time to talk a bit about the performance of them in the real world. I'll be honest, I have really struggled to get flight time on these since they arrived simply because of the horrible weather that we've had in the UK. However, I have had a little bit and I'm going to share with you some of that now and just some thoughts as we move through it. So I finally managed to get out and get a couple of flights in. The first aircraft we're going to be using is the HD0 aircraft. This is using the Micro V2 camera alongside the Freestyle VTX, which is the one that does go up to the higher power level. Now, these flights are not designed to be anything special. It's just a basic flight. And what I'm going to do now is hop over to the onboard audio recording on the goggles to give you an idea of how that sounds out in the real world as well. Okay, so just to do some nice, easy flights, just to show you how the HD0 goggles record on their new H265 DVR. Now, here I'm running the Micro V2 camera, which is probably the best looking camera for HD0 today, with the Freestyle VTX. And this really is probably the best setup image-wise you're gonna get. You've still got that ultra low latency, around 19.7 milliseconds fixed, and you've got it available in the 4x3 or the 16x9 mode like I've got it here. I'll probably do a 4x3 flight in a minute. I'm just keeping high a second just to give you an idea of how it looks overall. Nothing crazy. Just some nice straight flights just to give you an idea. Now obviously one of the big selling points of HD0 has always been the fixed low latency for racing but that doesn't mean it doesn't make a nice digital system. Oh we're getting a bunch of dogs coming down. You can hear them already. Fans on the goggles just came on and off. Actually, in these temperatures, they're nice and cool, no problems at all. Now, just demonstrating the DVR recording, as at the moment the fans are pretty much off on the goggles, so I don't know how it's going to sound. That's child number two running around in the background. I don't know how much you can hear him. 
end. Right. Time to just just give you these again. I'm not doing anything here on purpose. I'm really just flying it fairly straight and flat as much as I can just to give you an idea how the HD0 system looks on these goggles on this DVR I'm not looking to um, prove anything with regards to penetration or anything like that this is simply about how the image quality can look on the system Now I'm using the true RC antennas here on this one at the moment. Battery's getting a little low on this one now, so I want to start looking at the in. Next it was time to test the analogue performance. Now on this I was using the Skyzone 4 xs with the SteadyView module and on the HD0 side of things I was using a TBS Fusion. For this I was using my Basher build which contains the T-Rex camera from Foxia which is one of the best analogue cameras that you can get today. Now, in some of that footage, I demonstrated the recording capabilities of the DVR with regards to audio. Now, at the moment, I'm recording this on the goggles on the top of my head. I'm just going to move them into the usual position so you can hear them. And this is what it would sound like. Now, obviously, the built-in microphone in these headsets uh, is picking up the internal fans. The fans cut in and out depending on the temperature of the goggles. And that's obviously going to have an effect on the audio quality. However, you can also use these with an external microphone or something like the Apple headphones. So what I'll do next is just hop over to that to give you an idea of how that sounds. <laughs> 
Okay, so now I'm wearing a set of Apple headphones. These are obviously the ones with the 3.5 millimeter jack and not the lightning ones. Now, the headset is obviously again on the top of my head. I'm going to move it down and this will give you an idea of just the kind of audio quality that you can get with a headset. What you shouldn't have now is the fans being picked up as much. The fans are running quite loud at this moment in time, but you definitely shouldn't be able to hear them as much as you would have with the internal microphone. Now, obviously, this is never going to be studio quality audio but it is a nice feature to have and it is going to be handy for those of us who do make content and a nice way of being able to actually overlay audio onto what we're doing at the time. At the point of me making this video, there are a number of features on the new HD Zero goggles that aren't available yet. For instance, the new 1080p 30 mode is coming in about a month's time from the point of me recording, and I've only just received in that new Nano 90 camera that supports that 540p 90 frames a second mode. As a result of that, I'm going to be covering them in a separate video in the next couple of weeks. Furthermore, there are a lot of changes and improvements happening on the goggles software side as well. We've got this fantastic menu new system that's been improved and tweaked and whereas right now there are little bits of it that do feel a little bit clunky or a little bit slow all of that stuff is being optimized and you're going to have a huge amount of options with regards to how you want these goggles to boot for instance you're going to have the ability to select if you want them to boot into the last input boot to the last channel or even boot into the menu system or scan the real amazing thing with the HD Zero goggles is the community support, but also the amount of work that's gone in from the community to help get them to where they are today, but also drive them forward as well. And we're going to see a huge amount of development on these goggles as time goes on. Now, one last thing I just want to talk a bit about before I move into the pricing and then my thoughts is the optics on these goggles and how they are for me. Now, just to be clear, optics on goggles is very subjective. It is different for every person. The fitment is different and not everyone is going to get the same level of performance. For instance, I found the Orca FPV-1 pilots not great in the sense I saw a lot of tunneling. The image wasn't as nice as I'd like it. And I found the screens very small at the end of those tunnels as well but I also had that light reflection in the front tunnel area whereas the HDO2s were much better but the Skyzone 4 xs and even the Avatar HD goggles were the perfect ones for me. These really do sit very close to the O4Xs for me, although there are a few little things. It isn't easy for me to get these end-to-end -end clear. I do get a little bit of vignetting cutting off the corner of the screens, and I get a little bit of blur on the sides. It is very, very minor. I can't quite get them as end-to-end -end clear as the O4Xs or the Avatar HD goggles, but they are dramatically better than the likes of the FPV-1 pilots or some of the others out there. The screen and image quality is fantastic. The clarity and the colors is great. The fitment of the goggles is very good as well. I've got the narrower faceplate on and it seems to fit absolutely fine and the foam is okay. I don't see the foam holding up too long if I'm honest, but you can fit the Skyzone foam to these goggles as well. So if you do need to replace it, you can do that. Overall, I've got no major complaints with regards to the optics and fitment. I just wanted to though share my experience because on all of my goggles reviews, I have shared my experience. Can't quite get them end to end clear, but much better than the others. For me though, the O4Xs are still the perfect overall fitment and optic design for my personal face style and my eyes, but these are very, very close to them. Another thing to mention on the goggles with regards to performance is anti-fogging. In recent times, we've had a number of releases from other manufacturers that have had some of the worst anti-fogging performance that we've ever seen. For instance, the Avatar HD goggles have close to zero anti-fogging and the DJIs are even worse. However, I am pleased to say that the anti-fogging performance on the HD Zero goggles is fantastic. I've seen no fogging whatsoever. And on top of that, you have the ability to control the addressable fans, control the top fan independently which gives you the control over the anti-fogging performance if you want to. It's great to see that this element has really been taken into account and it's frankly astonishing that other manufacturers have slipped up so badly with regards to this aspect. 
Just before I share with you my thoughts, it's time to talk about pricing. Now, originally, the HD Zero goggles were set to release at $599. Whilst there were some people that thought that was quite high, they are a high-end digital OLED goggle with HD Zero built in, and that pricing is very much in the ballpark of the likes of the HD 02s, the Skyzone 04 xs and the FPV-1 pilots from Orca. However, Carl has decided to sell these direct via the HD Zero website, and he's going to offer them now for $495, offering a $105 saving over that original price. That is astonishing compared to what we were at before, and frankly, there is no other goggle on the market that offers this level of capability and features for that price. HD Zero are also going to be shipping these internal for US customers and from China in the rest of the world. So if you are in the US, don't worry, you're not going to be hit with import fees or taxes. You'll be able to buy them and get them shipped straight to you. I am really pleased to see the price on these come down and it is going to really help drive the adoption not only of HD Zero, but again, it makes these goggles one of the best purchase options for analog and digital on the market today. Okay, so it's time for me to share with you my thoughts on these new goggles from HD Zero. Genuinely, I think these are one of the best FPV goggles that you can buy on the market today. They're certainly not perfect and there are definitely things I think could be better. However, Overall, they are a no-brainer buy over the likes of other high-end goggles such as the HDO2s from Fat Shark or the FPV-1 pilots from Orca. I see no reason to even consider those other goggles when these exist. They offer not only HD0 built in, but you have HDMI in, HDMI out, and all of that other additional functionality. The menu system is light years better than any of the others, the feature set is better, and they give you more options to use with other systems than any other goggle on the market today. If you're looking to get yourself an analog goggle, you can use these with a bay on the side, which gives you that deinterlaced analog FPV, which gives a better image than I've seen on any of the other goggles. It has that image processing as well and the DVR recording. You have that HD0 built in, which means if you want to use the HD0 system, you're going to get the very best performance from it with the new modes that are available, such as the 1080p30 and that new 540p90. But you can also use these with the likes of the Avatar HD VRX module as well, not only in the 60 frames a second mode, but now in the low latency 100 frames a second mode. These are the only goggles available today that allow you to do that. If you're looking to get into DJI FPV, you're obviously going to have to choose a set of DJI goggles. However, if you're looking to get into anything else, these are the most versatile and best option that you can buy today. Now, overall, there is so much to like here. The image quality on the screens is great. The menu system is much better than I've seen on other goggles on the market, and the IO is just phenomenal. Whilst there is a lot to like, there are a few downsides that I want to talk about on these goggles as well, just to ensure that you are fully aware of where my thoughts are on them. For instance, they are one of the larger and heavier of the traditional style goggle on the market today. They're not as big as the DJI V1s or V2s, but they are a little bit larger than some of the others, but there is a bit more weight in them too. Also, the analog module on the side is a little bit of a faff. I understand why it had to be an external module, but it is just something to understand that it is a bolt-on appendage that does go on the side of the goggle. And when it is fitted, it does make access to the rotary encoder on the top a little bit more difficult. It's not quite as easy to get to as it is without it, especially when you've got antennas fitted on the module. On that current external analog module bay, also, you cannot turn that off with the standard module. It is powered on all of the time, which means it's going to draw a little bit of extra power. If you did want to turn it off, you'd have to remove it. However, I do believe the new module that's available in the future with Wi-Fi built in will have the ability to power down the analog module as well. 
The goggles are a little loud compared to some of the others on the market, but what is really nice about the sound is there's no high-pitched whine. The sound you do get is all fan noise and it's all airflow and it certainly isn't too distracting. The only real downside to it is it is noticeable on the internal microphone when you're recording. However, you can plug in an external microphone if you want to and that will massively clear up the clarity of the audio. Finally, about the other only couple of downsides I can really think of is they are a little slow to boot up compared to some goggles on the market but again it's nothing particularly bad and it is something we've come to expect especially from the digital goggles and they are a little power hungry as well drawing around 15 watts of power and you're going to need to take that into account when choosing your goggle battery but there are far more upsides to these goggles than there are downsides and genuinely I am astonished what the guys at HD Zero have been able to deliver here. For the price I think these are one of the best goggles you can buy today. As I've already said, comparing them to the others, I think it's a no-brainer to buy these over the likes of the Fat Sharks or the Orcas. If you're looking to get into analog only, I think the Skyzone 4 xs are one of the very good options that is still out there, especially considering the fact that you do get that steady view analog module included as standard. However, I'd be honest, if you're going into analog and you're thinking about digital, then you really should only consider these. In the end, I think the guys at HD Zero and Carl especially has done an amazing job here and all of the input from the community really has helped to develop what I believe to be one of the best FPV goggles available on the market today. If you're interested in getting a set, there will be a link to them in the description of this video. I do think they're going to be quite difficult to get hold of for some time simply because of the popularity. However, they will be available there via the HD Zero website. So that's it. They're available. If you want to get them, please do go check out that link. I want to say a massive thank you to the guys over at HD Zero, including Carl for giving me a little bit of early access on these. I'm really interested in knowing what you think about these goggles as well. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comment section and I will try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Please do give me your feedback and if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this because we did buy these, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content like this on the channel. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.